Hello everybody and welcome back to the show. We are about to start a multi-part series on the Stevens grip, but before I got into the nitty gritty details of the grip, I just wanted to clear up a few things. Like number one, the Stevens technique is more than just about how you hold the mallets. And in his book, it does devote a whole lengthy part about the mechanics of how you hold the mallets, but his technique is so much more than that. In fact, he even says in the back in the appendix, I did not title my book Method of Gripment, but Method of Movement, because his technique is more about how you get around the instrument and how you position your mallets to play the notes in the most efficient manner possible, not just how you hold them in your hand. So we're gonna kind of clear that up in a minute, but before we do so, I just wanna talk about a couple variations on the grip. Um, for example, this grip has been around for about 30 years, and as such, it has kind of developed numerous variations according to how people needed to use it. For example, Lee developed this grip to be more, you know, used for a solo marimba play. And if you watch him play, you know, he keeps his mallets very low to the keyboard, he uses very light mallets, and everything is very calm, controlled, positioned well, and that's exactly the technique that he uses. But a lot of people use this grip and say like drum core and things like that, where they have to get a lot of volume, uh, volume out of the instrument. So they've developed this like kind of stronger way of playing the instrument that isn't quite as finessed, but it gets the sound that they want. Okay, and we're gonna talk about that when that comes up. Now for the most part, my own technique follows what is outlined in Lee's book, Method of Movement. But there are numerous uh, kind of small little variations you'll see from person to person because their anatomy is different or because their play style is just a little bit different. So let's talk about a couple of those. Okay, now in the Stevens book, he recommends holding the mallets with the thumb up position like so. But some people, such as Mark Ford and Andy Harnsberger, have developed a way of holding the mallets that involves a little bit more of a diagonal positioning. So instead of the wrist being straight vertical like this, they've tilted it to the side just a little bit like that. And a lot of that is because they both play with the marimba very low in comparison to other people. And the lower you play the marimba, the more your arm angle is gonna prevent upward wrist motion. So they've tilted it to the side to be able to still get a nice good turn. Now another thing you'll see sometimes, especially if you watch Mark Ford play, is that in the Stevens book, it recommends not having very much shaft down there. But some players, they'll have an, a good inch or two down there. And they've worked with their technique and developed a play style which incorporates that in a manner that works well. But for starting out, I would recommend going ahead and doing what the book says and keeping it short. And if you find later that keeping it longer is really advantageous to you, there's no harm in switching to it, but for most positioning, I find things to be a little bit easier keeping a short amount of shaft down here. Now the last big variation you'll see is that if you look at my thumb, your thumb actually has two joints. You have this joint right here, and you have this joint back here. Now, if you know this, you know, some people can roll their tongue into an O and some people can't, just kind of a genetic thing. In the same manner, some people can bend this joint and some people can't. Like, I actually cannot bend this joint at all. I can bend this one just fine, but this one, I, I cannot bend it. Some people can make a 90 degree angle with their thumb right here, which is really cool, I just can't do it. It won't, literally won't bend any farther than that. So if you look at the Stevens book, or if you look at my playing, we kind of have the same thumb position where the thumb more or less goes straight. It, it doesn't really bend very much, but people who are really flexible in this joint will have, uh, I can't even really do it, uh, yeah, something like that. They'll have the, the thumb popped up back there. And that's fine, it just kind of depends on your anatomy. But people who cannot bend that joint, their thumb may stick out just a little bit past their index finger sometimes. And people who are really flexible in this joint, their thumb will be slightly farther back on the mallet and more, more in line with their finger. All right, now the Stevens grip revolves around one guiding principle, the economy of motion. If you can eliminate unnecessary motion, then the theory is that if you do so, it will make your playing more relaxed and more efficient. Here's an example. We all see this, you know, beginning players, they like to use a lot of down strokes. So if they're playing like the F major scale, it looks like this. All right, now the big problem with that is each note is taking three motions. You have the down stroke, and then you move to the right, and then you lift it up, and then you're ready to go again. So you have one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And that starts to add up after a while. Now, the theory behind the Stevens technique is that you should use piston strokes whenever possible. So that only limits it down to two. You go one, two, and you move on top of the next note ready to go. One, two, one, two. 
And this not only looks more fluid, but it also allows you to play this really fast because you can't use all those tiny movements and motions if you're going really, really fast. You have to do two motions instead of three. And then it looks something like this. Now this is also used in chords, and in chords we tend to call it pre-positioning. If you want to go from one chord to another chord, you want to hit this one and immediately move to the next one on your way back up. So what a beginning player might do is something like this. All right, and then we have those three motions that we were talking about earlier. So in the Stevens technique, you want to come immediately to the next notes on your way back up, and then it looks like this. And that allows you to play these things at increasingly faster tempos with very little tension. And a lot of players, you know, even intermediate marimba players, they, they will do this and they will not realize that they're doing it. They will not realize that they're keeping the mouths low or that they're using lots of unnecessary motions. And there's no technique that shows that more than the triple lateral stroke. You see this all the time. This is what a common triple lateral stroke looks like. So with all the bounciness and the mallets and all the downstroking and stuff like that, players can't play it very fast. And when they try to, their hands tense up. It looks something like this. Now, if they were to utilize the Stevens grip, or I'm sorry, the Stevens technique, they would keep the mallets up when they weren't being used, thus minimizing the bouncing and all the wasted motion. And that allows you to play them really fast with a lot of fluidity. All right, everybody, thanks for watching. I know we didn't do a whole lot of playing or exercise learning this time around, but I just really had to get off my chest that the Stevens grip is more than just how you hold the mallets, but it has to do with the whole technique of how you move around the instrument. And in doing so, we're gonna be able to play a lot faster and a lot more relaxed than if we keep doing all these downstrokes and all of the wasted motion. And we're gonna get into a lot of that in the next videos. In fact, I have a whole series planned on the Stevens grip in which we're gonna dissect every kind of stroke and we're going to go into like every little thing that your hand needs to do to make things as efficient as possible. And we're going to start that with a single stroke next week. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.